As a kid, I had some cool dreams. A lot of them had to do with flying, like being a pilot, using all kinds of parachutes, or become an astronaut. I would enjoy myself and see myself with this incredible feeling of freedom. Nothing happened. Today, my idea in life is to enable. I want to see people achieve their goals. And I've often been wondering what is holding us back and what is making us move forward. At the beginning, I was thinking that it's enough to be just courageous and to keep at it and forget about all the rest. That's somewhat how I handle deadlines. I put some pressure on myself, make sure I don't have too much time left to either think or fear, and enough to get the things done well. It's going back to instincts, and it's, it's working in a similar, similar way as, as our body is doing it, reducing functions to essentials. That's not quite how I want to manage projects. There, I would prefer to see myself just climbing, like using landscape, using fears and using courage to achieve the goal. Things are slightly different when we think about new ideas because they pop up and it starts with a wonderful time playing around with them, creating and sharing dreams. And then when I do that for too long time, I'm lucky to have a friend who will remind me and give me the magic words, just do it. But there's this gap between talking and making. It's somehow full of questions like, is this the right thing to do? Am I going to achieve this? What are the others going to think? Fears are deeply rooted. As babies, we experience anxieties. Toddlers will fear to be overwhelmed by emotions. Rational fears settle in at the age of about seven. It's fascinating to observe how fears sh shape our behavior in an unconscious way and how it is possible to describe them with three basic questions. Am I friendly enough? Am I active enough? Am I smart enough? Looking back at my time at school, sorry, Mark, I was learning that there is one right answer and lots of wrong ones. And I had to have the right answer to get a good grade. I'm a bit smiling about myself today, but for a long time I believed that my father always knew the right answer. From all this, I concluded that to be successful, I have to be smart. But one day on my bike, I was dreaming and speeding. And there was this car on the side. I never saw it until some minutes later when I woke up on the ground. I had flown over it and felt totally stupid. From this first flying lesson, <laughs> I still keep this worry that I might miss the important information, that I might not be concentrating enough. So now when I'm putting dreams into action, one of the things I try to do is collect all the information, make sure I have everything I need to succeed might look a bit like that. And it's tough because it's this weird and vague idea that it's possible to know the result of a project before finishing it. So I don't want to look stupid, but that's too strong to change. What I can do is I can look at my fears, see how they shape my behavior, and that's something I can act upon. And it's kind of fun to just do that. It solves this problem in the question, which is the word enough. I can decide for myself when enough is enough. And there I find the freedom to just do it. There was still a little bit of lesson to be learned. My father 
had the same dream to fly. And I tried to persuade him. When he was in his 70s, I succeeded. And he started taking lessons. And proudly, he presented me with the certificate for his first solo flight. Later on, he stopped. That's the first time I saw that he was a strong person. He had tried, and he had decided for himself that it had become too difficult for him to fly safely. He showed me the difference between being stupid and listening to fears. Thank you for your attention. I hope you like this idea, find it worthwhile to share, and whenever you feel like it, try it.